today as we come to the table. God's glory in the middle of the city and His glory is going to be emanating out of the city and there's going to be all these colors we'll get to in just a moment and all of His glory will be shining through all these foundation stone colors, uh, through the pearls that are at the gates, through all these things. It's just going to be this glory coming out of this city. And that's why I said it's going to be really exciting if it is up off the earth a little bit right there because just looking from the earth at it and seeing all the, the beautiful colors and the glory and the radiance coming off of it is going to be absolutely astounding. I mean, more than we could ever imagine. We've never seen anything like this because we've never seen God in His pure holiness and beauty before, but we're going to see it then. The New Jerusalem, which is also called the Tabernacle of God, the Holy City, the City of God, and Heavenly Jerusalem, is literally heaven on earth. Today, Pastor Mark will be explaining the symbolism and the beautiful details that God will create in the future for His people that have received Jesus for salvation. Well, thanks for staying with us today as we come to the table, the daily Bible study program of Pastor Mark Kirk of Calvary, Knoxville. The New Jerusalem will be a place of unimagined blessing. The curse of the old earth will be gone. And in the city is the tree of life for the healing of the nations and the river of life. The New Jerusalem is the ultimate fulfillment of all God's promises and is God's goodness made fully manifest. Now, let's join Pastor Mark in the book of Revelation chapter 21 with today's edition of Come to the Table. Revelation chapter 21, and we're actually starting in verse 9 because in the, for the New Jerusalem, we, we made it up to New Jerusalem and got the first eight verses in, and uh, we're going to be looking at the New Jerusalem and looking at what it's going to be made like, what it's going to be like, and maybe give you a little bit of a visual in your mind, the best that we can understand as we go through this. So John has made it to the end, and one of these angels here is now going to explain to John what he's seeing here at the very end. So in verse 9 it says, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the last plagues. So these were the guys, remember, that God was using to pour out the, the final plagues there on the earth, the bowls of wrath, came to me and talked to me saying, come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So now we're the bride, we're the lamb's wife, but it's interesting, he's going to make an allusion here to us and the new Jerusalem is one and the same. Now we're, we're not the new Jerusalem and the Jeru new Jerusalem's not us, but we, we are connected because that's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time as the bride of Christ in the new Jerusalem, that glorious city that's going to be there um, uh, created at the very end. Because remember, this will not be the same heaven and same earth. Uh, we, at, at there at the end of the thousand years, this current heaven and earth is going to be destroyed and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And that's where we are on this timeline. And so, um, and, and notice he says, he carried me away in the spirit to a high mountain, showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Now, the earth will be here, and then we'll see this new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. You guys will see that because we'll all be there. And the question is, is the new Jerusalem going to come on down and just actually land on the earth, or is the new Jerusalem going to stay hovering above the earth? We don't know. It's not clear from Scripture. Some scholars believe it'll come down and actually take a position, boom, on the earth and have a place that it fits. Some believe, no, it's actually going to be floating above heaven. And I, I kind of, you know, I know it's going to be great either way. I kind of hope it's floating above the earth uh, as, as, because as we get into the description here, you'll see why. But whatever it's going to be, it's going to be the most beautiful it can be. So even if I'm imagining that it would be more beautiful floating above the earth, God knows better. If it's on the earth, it'll be more beautiful. But in my mind, you'll see why it's going to be exciting if it is floating above the earth as we get into this, at least from our vantage point of trying to imagine what it's going to be like. And notice it says it'll have the glory of God, verse 11. Her light was like the most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So the interesting thing about this city, the New Jerusalem, is it's going to be made of heavenly materials, gold and real jewels and all these things in the heavenly purest form, but they're going to be see-through. Even the gold is see-through. 
So it has some level of consistency to it, but it's, it's going to be, which really is exciting because imagine now God's glory in the middle of this city and his glory is going to be emanating out of the city and there's going to be all these colors we'll get to in just a moment and all of his glory will be shining through all these foundation stone colors, uh, through the pearls that are at the gates, through all these things. It's just going to be this glory coming out of this city. And that's why I said it's going to be really exciting if it is up off the earth a little bit right there because just looking from the earth at it and seeing all the, the beautiful colors and the glory and the radiance coming off of it is going to be absolutely astounding. I mean, more than we could ever imagine. We've never seen anything like this because we've never seen God in His pure holiness and beauty before, but we're going to see it then. It says, also she had a great and high wall with 12 gates. So now we're describing the city, okay? The great and high wall, it doesn't tell us how high the wall was, but with 12 gates, again, 12 in scriptures, the number of God's perfect government or God's perfect rulership. So you'll see that number a lot. 12 angels at the gates. Again, the angels will be there just basically greeting people as they come and go because there won't be any bad guys. There won't be any guards needed. So they'll just be there kind of just for beauty and glory. It's standing at the gates of the kingdom. Exciting, isn't it? Like, you know, riding up to some big palace and there stand these mighty angels, you know, and this glory of God emanating out of it and, and the angels standing there and it's just going to be amazing. And names were written on them, that is these gates, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, for those who say that God is through with the nation of Israel and the church has replaced them, this verse should silence them once and for all. Because if God was through with the 12 tribes of Israel, he certainly wouldn't have the 12 gates with the 12 tribes' names on them for all of eternity. So God has promised he was going to be faithful to them through all of eternity, and now we're seeing even on the city of New Jerusalem, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel will be written on these gates. And so we'll see that somewhere. You know, you'll go by, look, there's Issachar, there's Benjamin, there's Simeon. You know, you'll see it as you go around the city, and just awesome. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now, I'll give you a heads up before we get to it. The city is basically a giant square, all right? So you're going to have three gates on this side, three on that side, three on that side, and three on that side. And right in the middle of each of these, there's going to be the, the three gates that will be kind of stationed out evenly. And on these gates will be the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. We'll get to the full size of it in just a moment. Now the wall of the city, so now we go to the wall. The wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, this is interesting as well because this shows us that as far as an official office of an apostle, there's only 12. Notice the 12 apostles. Now, why do I bring that up? This would be everyone. I believe you say, well, Mark, what about um, Judas because he fell? I believe Paul was the one. We'll know for sure when we get there. But I believe Paul was the one that took Judas's place, not the one that Peter tried to choose and the guys when they cast lots. Because Jesus specifically handpicked each apostle, and we saw him handpick Paul later, knock him off of his horse, blind him, give him the vision, use him, and all that. And I believe Paul's going to be one of the names. But you're going to see Matthew, you know, uh, John, you know, Paul, you'll see their names written here on these foundation stones. So the gates will have the tribe's names on them. The foundation stones in these three blocks around the city will have the 12 apostles on them. And the reason I bring this up is because I don't believe there is anyone anymore in the, in the office of an apostle. Now, what do I mean by that? Remember the, the office of a prophet. In the Old Testament, Jesus said the prophets were until John. That's what Jesus said. So what that means is there aren't any more Old Testament prophets like Elijah or, or, or these guys, you know, whatever. That was the office of a prophet. However, there are still people with the gift of prophecy. You see the difference? Well, like this, in the same way, it would appear from this verse that there's only the 12 apostles and they're going to have their names ingrained, if you will, on these foundation stones because they were the ones that God used to lay the foundation of the church. And there aren't going to be any more apostles. Now, are there people that still have the, the can be an apostle but not the office of an apostle? Apostle just means a sent one. And I believe you see, when you see someone who's sent into missions, I believe they would qualify as an apostle under that definition. They are sent ones. So I do believe we still have sent ones in that sense of the biblical apostle is one of the gifts spoken of in the New Testament. But I don't believe we have any apostles such as the office of an apostle because of this verse right here as well as other things in Scripture. And I bring that up because you have certain cults like um, the Mormons, and they have their 12 apostles, and they say these are official apostles with the same authority that the apostles had back in the Old Testament. Well, their names aren't going to be here on these foundation stones. There'll be no Mormon apostles written here because they don't exist 
These are the 12 apostles that God chose, and it goes back to Jesus when he chose those that followed him. So their names are written on these, on these foundation stones. It says, And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city and its gates and its walls. And the city is laid out as a square. And I already shared that with you. Its length was as great as its breadth, so an e a box, if you will, equal in size. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, height are equal. Now, this is somewhere around 1,400 miles. Some say as low as 1,300, depending on which furlong you use. I think it's probably a larger furlong used. Um, some say as much as 1,500. But if so, each of the foundation stones, if it was 1,500, would be about 500 miles, 500 miles, 500 miles. 500 miles, 500 miles, 500 miles. You get all the way around, or a little bit less than that if it's 1,400. And it would be that way. It would also be 1,400 tall. So people say, well, there be enough room to get everybody in there. That's massive. Again, it's not that you're going to be living in the New Jerusalem anyway. We're going to find out that people are coming and going. It's going to be a city that we come and go out of. We'll be coming down to the earth. There may be other things in the universe God will have us doing. We don't know. But this will just be one, uh, what the main city, if you will, where the Lord himself is and where he dwells. As far as the foundations, there's two different schools of thought. As we're about to color, cover the colors of the foundations, some believe that each foundation covered the entire bottom of the city. And the next foundation was on top of it with a new color covering the entire bottom. The next one, a new color, the entire 1,500 or 1,400 miles. And some believe, no, it's just these 500-mile blocks, okay, that are stacked around the, the base of it. and give it, and, But they, they meet all in the middle, so they're un, under the city is all, all different colors. And around the city, all different colors. Now imagine, if you will, whatever the case might be, can you imagine? Because either way, the whole city, the whole undergirding of the city is going to have all these beautiful jewels and colors all under it and around it, regardless of how the foundation is. Now imagine that floating above the earth and God's glory emanating through that, coming down to the earth while we're down here doing stuff. You know, I'm going to run down, you know, to the earth, Lord. I've got to go pick something up. You know, we have a big event tonight in the kingdom, and I'll be back, you know. And as you come down to the earth and you're looking around, you look up, and all you see is this glory just coming out of the bottom of this beautiful city. By the way, it's about the size of the moon. So that helps you get a visual. If you look up at the moon, that's about the size of the New Jerusalem. So now when, next time you look up at the moon and you see the moon all bright and full, and that's just the reflection of the sunlight on those beautiful bright nights. Imagine now the pure glory of God coming out of something that size that's perfectly square with all these colors we're about to cover. Now the colors will become more dramatic in a moment as we get to it. But the glory of this as it's coming out is going to be amazing. And this is even cooler because the Bible says that we will shine like the stars. And what that means is, is one of you guys are on the earth, and I want you guys to run, oh, i got to go up the kingdom, I'll grab something, be right back. I'll be looking, you'll go in the kingdom, and there'll be like this light moving in through these clear walls. And there you go, you're like a light moving around the city, and that light will come through the bottom, through all that glory and all that. The light will be shining everywhere, and all these little lights moving around the city. You'll see all these lights everywhere, and lights coming out of the city, and lights going into the city as saints are coming in and out. And it'll be floating up there above the earth, very possibly, with God's glory coming down through it. Can you imagine what this is going to look like? This is amazing. Okay, and so this is just what little bit we can kind of start beginning to grasp of what it might look like. So he goes on and says, verse 17, that he measured its wall 144 cubits according to the measure of a man, that is of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper and the city was a pure gold like clear glass. Again, notice the pure gold here is like a clear glass. So it's going to be some, the purest gold, again, you can actually see through it, heavenly gold. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. Now, as we go through the stones, I want you to, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you the colors. We can't see the colors exactly how they're going to be. And even if we could, we couldn't get the brilliance of what these colors would be like. But try to imagine, first of all, the city with all these colored stones and in in, in, in each of the names of the apostles, the 12 tribes, etc. And now all of a sudden you have these colors. And so on one of the stones here, notice uh, the very first one. It says the, the foundation of the wall. Uh, of the city was adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first one was jasper. Um, the second one is sapphire. The third is chalcedony, kind of a light blue color with a darker blue. The fourth is emerald, which is a beautiful green. I love emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth is sardius. The seventh, chrysolite. Uh, the eighth was beryl. Ninth, topaz. Tenth, chrysoprase, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. 
So these are just the earthly colors to give you a picture. The foundation of the new Jerusalem where we're going to be going in and out of like little lights and shining lights and shining like angels. This is the foundation of it. And all of our little lights are going to be coming through all these colors. The glory of the Lord is going to be coming through all these colors. And it's going to be like a city with lights going in and out and moving around. And we'll see everybody because you can see through the city. And it's going to be just pure glory above the heavens. So next time you look up at the moon, do it. Just I did it the other night. Imagine, wow, what would that be like to walk out and see that? You know, if you're down on the earth running errands or whatever the case might be. And so it uh, kind of gives you an idea of some of the colors. And again, this is just the best we can do here. This is nothing compared to what it's really going to be like. Now, around these foundations, notice verse 21, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Now, again, it doesn't tell us how large these pearls are, but if they're the gates, they're gigantic pearls. And again, it depends on how high the walls are. We know that the, the thing is 1,500 or 14 to 1,500 by 14 to 1,500. Do they go all the way to the top? Do they go part way? How high is the wall? The wall doesn't say the wall goes all the way up that high. But again, these are massive, massive pearls. Can you imagine the size of the oysters in heaven? But it's really cool when you think about it because it's one pearl. And that means it would open in the middle. Imagine a big, beautiful pearl just opened up. And there stands an angel by it. And there's all these colors and the foundation stones and all the glory. You're starting to get the picture of what this is going to be like? This is amazing. Each individual gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Again, you could see everything. You know, it's interesting. There's nothing to hide in heaven. Everything is open. The Bible says that everything is open before the Lord. He sees all things. Now you know why. There's nothing we can hide. You know, we think we're getting away with our sin or doing something that God doesn't see. He sees everything. And in heaven, we won't be trying to hide because everybody will be living righteously. But you won't have to worry about somebody around a corner saying something they shouldn't be saying or doing something they shouldn't be doing. Everybody's going to see everybody out in the open, but we're all going to be in God's glory and God's purity. Exciting. He says, but I saw no temple in it, verse 22, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So the Lord himself, he is our temple. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. And the Lamb is its light. Jesus is our light. God's glory is illuminating it through Jesus Christ. Isn't that neat? The glory of Jesus illuminated through his bride, the holy Jerusalem. Even today, that's how the Lord is. His light is seen through his bride. And you know, it brings up a point. The purer we are, the more God can show his beautiful colors through us. Isn't that interesting? Because we're his bride. And the Lamb is the light of his bride. So the clearer our lives are, the more transparent we are with each other and with the Lord in purity, the more we shine for Jesus and the more attractive Jesus is to the world and the more the world is drawn to Jesus. I mean, there's something about you. What is it? It's Jesus. And that means the cleaner we are as a vessel, the more he can shine through us to the world around us and be that picture of the holy Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, the purity of the Lord. I love it. So in the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and their honor into it. Now, again, it's speaking, of course, of those that have already been saved. It's not going to be like there's nations that need to be saved after that. These will be everyone who's saved and, and the nations of peoples. Remember, the Bible says we will be kings and priests to the Lord. So we will be kings on the earth. And what our duties will be, I don't know. But we'll, we'll have kingdoms. Uh, it'll be his kingdom, but we'll serve as kings with him. We'll have uh, things that we have to do here on the earth. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll be going back and forth, no doubt, for festivals and events in the New Jerusalem and celebrations and just going to see the Lord and going to worship, and it's going to be amazing. You know, it's really like a fairy tale. You think about it. You know, you ever wonder what it would be like to be a princess, you ladies? No, you've never thought that. And there's no lady in this room that's ever thought that. Of course you have. You're going to be that and more in the kingdom. The, we'll all be kings and priests to the Lord. We're going to be royalty. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, but there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So again, be, never again will the new heaven and the new earth be defiled with sin. It's going to, God's going to wipe the slate clean, and it'll be clean forever. And there won't be any more sin. We will be sinless beings at that time. Then in chapter 22, And he showed me a pure river of water, water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Can you imagine? Here's this clear kingdom with all these colors and all these lights and all the emanations and God's glory. And here comes this pure river down the middle of it. Can you imagine what that water is going to look like? 
How sparkly, how pure, how, I mean, I can't even imagine what that's going to be like. It's going to be running from the throne right down the middle of the city. So you'll come into the city, you know, and you'll see the angels. Hey, Gabriel, good to see you, amen, good to see you. You'll head on in through the pearly gate, all the lights around you, all the glory, the colors underneath your feet as you're walking on it. Just the glory emanating. Here's that beautiful water, and you're going to see it and walking by it, and you're going to run into people that I'm just going to, it's going to be amazing. And it just goes on forever and ever. And there's this beautiful stream going down the middle. In the middle of the street, on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, interesting, the tree of life, like in the garden, there's going to be rows of the tree of life on both sides of the stream. And this is a little bit of a mystery. He says they 12 fruits each month. Will there be months in heaven? I don't know that it'll be like our months, but this is how John records it in whatever way he was receiving this. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. We know there won't be sickness. There won't be sin. So what will this do? I don't know. It's obviously going to be something that's just going to be an additional blessing to the peoples and the nations and whatever that would be. But there won't be an issue with sickness or sin. So it's a little bit hard to understand. Again, our mind is limited into what we can grasp. John doing the best he can to describe it. And he says, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall shall serve him. Wow. In that kingdom, we'll be serving the Lord and seeing his glory. Look at this verse four. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. Again, we talked about our names, remember, are written on our foreheads right now. When you give your life to the Lord, he puts his name on your forehead, shows that you belong to him. And it's a lot like a bride. When a bride gets married, what does she do? She takes her husband's name. So God has given us a whole picture of what it's going to be like in heaven. We're going to take our spiritual husband's name. We will become his, and his name will be on our forehead, and we'll belong to him. And there should be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So no end to the glory of the kingdom. You can't ever get too much. It'll never run out. And what I love about this is, even though this sounds amazing, the Bible says God will be showing us new things throughout eternity. Can you imagine? You would think at some point you go, okay, wow, I mean, I've been here like quadrillion years, and I love this place. I'll never get tired of it, but I've seen it all. The Bible says you won't be able to do that. It says age upon age, he'll open up brand new things, just like a whole new page is turned. It's something brand new to show us. It's going to go on forever. That's our creative God. That's his glory. And so we're always going to be wowed by our God. And then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. You know, I'm glad he put that there because it almost seems like it's too good to be true. What he's saying is, this is your future, believer. This is you. This is truly your future. Trust in it. It's faithful and it's true. This is what you have waiting on you. And the Lord God of the holy prophets send his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. And again, that's in God's timetable. For us, it seems like a long time. The Bible says to God, a thousand years is just like a day. So for us, it's like, wow, Lord, it's been 2,000 years. Yeah, a couple days. A couple days, and it won't be long. Hang on, coming back. He says, behold, I'm coming quickly. That means once I, once I do come, it's going to be fast. That's what the word means there. It's where we get the word tachometer, like in a car. Thanks for joining us today on Come to the Table with Pastor Mark Kirk. Pastor Mark is going through some teachings that cover Revelation. The book of Revelation is always one of those books that either draws people in or sends them running in confusion. But it doesn't have to be so puzzling that you stay away. In fact, as Pastor Mark's been going through these passages, our hope is that you're coming to a deeper and greater realization of who Jesus is in all of it. Thanks for tuning in. And we'd like to invite you to come visit us even this week. If you're in the Knoxville area, we'd love for you to come to Calvary Knoxville this weekend. Our services are Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 and 11.15 a.m., and a midweek service every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And we'd love for you to bring the whole family. Every time we gather, it's another opportunity for you to grow in how you're experiencing God. If you're interested and would like more info, Click on the church link at the bottom of the page at thewaymedia.net. You can also use the questions and comments link to get more info. And if you want to listen to any of these studies again, just click on the Come to the Table link online or connect with the Way Media app. That website again is thewaymedia.net. 
You can also get in touch with us over the phone at 865-609-1385. One more time, that number to connect with us is 865-609-1385. That's about all the time we have for today. But please join us again in Revelation right here on Come to the Table. Come to the Table is a radio outreach ministry of Calvary Knoxville.